This review was prepared by Davit Marikian and Savas Papagianidis and published by TheoryHub. TheoryHub covers a wide range of theories and act as a starting point for theory exploration in different research and teaching and learning contexts. This is a review of the protection motivation theory. Protection motivation theory is a theory explaining the impact of persuasive communication on protective behavior with an emphasis on cognitive mechanisms mediating fear appeals and behavior change. Protection motivation theory was introduced by Rogers in 1975 and further revised in 1983 to explain the impact of persuasive communication on behavior with an emphasis on cognitive mechanisms underpinning the rationale to follow or not to follow a recommended behavior. The theory was originally conceptualized for the utilization in the healthcare context. There were several practical and theoretical premises underpinning the development of the theory. In terms of practical importance, protection motivation theory was one of the first theories focusing on the psychological conditions explaining the tendency of people to protect themselves. The theory attempted to distinguish the factors of health-compromising and health-promoting behaviors. For example, despite the logic of avoiding threat and danger when recommended, individuals may still choose to engage in maladaptive behavior. Protective behaviors, such as using seat belts, regular physical examinations, a healthy lifestyle, refraining from mobile phone use while driving, Avoiding driving under the influence and using helmets while cycling could be taken to prevent injuries. However, people often do not adhere to preventive measures. From the theoretical perspective, the introduction of protection motivation theory aimed to advance the literature explaining health protective behaviors. The theory aimed to address a few gaps in the literature on health protection motivation that had been limiting the understanding of and the relationships between the psychological and cognitive drivers of protective behavior. The first limitation of prior theories is that the models do not account for the factor associated with risky and non-risky behaviors, namely response efficacy. Second, the prior theoretical models do not fully address the complexity of the drivers of adaptive behavior and differentiate between the factors of threat or coping appraisals. As a result, the relative importance of threat and coping appraisals when it comes to decision-making processes had not been explored. However, to comply with the recommendation individuals should think that they are vulnerable to the threat and the threat is severe enough. That means that individuals should score higher on threat appraisals than on coping appraisals. Therefore, protection motivation theory went beyond stating that the perceptions of threat severity, vulnerability, response cost, response efficacy and self-efficacy drive behavior change, but it captured the complexity of motivation by explaining the effects of two cognitive appraisal processes. Based on protection motivation theory, Individuals need to assess the threat appraisal dimension and coping appraisal separately. Prior research on fear-induced behavior provided mixed findings about the motivational role of fear arousal and the likelihood of compliance with recommended behavior. It had been argued that fear does not necessarily promote adaptive behavior, as fear may also lead to a thorough assessment of the recommendation, potentially inhibiting motivation if fear arousal achieved a certain threshold. Further empirical work, however, did not find sufficient support for the proposed effect of fear. Hence, the development of protection motivation theory was required to provide conceptual clarity to the research on fear appeal and motivation by identifying the key variables related to fear appeals and cognitive factors. Protection motivation theory is based on expectancy value theory. Expectancy value theory postulates that expectancy and value are the two factors determining the likelihood of a person engaging in behavior. Expectancy concerns the probability that behavior will result in the desired outcome, while value refers to the utility that an individual assigns to that outcome. It is believed that motivation is the result of the multiplicative impact of value and expectancy. That means that strong motivation is possible when people score high on both constructs. 
If either of the factors is equal to zero, motivation falls to zero too. While protection motivation theory does not incorporate expectancy and value factors in the model, the theory postulates that people behave in a certain manner due to the expectancy of the consequences of their actions, which have a certain value. Protection motivation theory considers the motivation to adopt the recommended behavior as an attitudinal state predicted by cognitive processes mediating the effect of fear appeals. In line with expectancy value theories fear appeals were broken down into three crucial stimuli, namely magnitude of the noxiousness of an event, the probability of event occurrence, and efficacy of recommended response reducing the stimuli of the noxious event. Fear appeals could present communication about one and the combination of two or three of the mentioned components that may trigger cognitive processes. These cognitive processes represent appraisals of the communicated information about the noxiousness of a negative event, its probability of occurrence and efficacy of response. The cognitive processes reflect the appraisal of the severity of a threatening event, the expectancy of exposure to the threat and the efficacy of a coping response. Appraisal of the severity of the threat concerns the evaluation of the degree to which the event can cause harm and damage. Expectancy of exposure refers to the assessment of the extent to which a person is susceptible to the threatening event, while the efficacy of a coping response is a belief that the adaptive behavior would be effective in mitigating the threat. Each appraisal process corresponds and is roughly proportional to the fear appeal component. For example, the strength of threat severity appraisal is similar to the strength of the magnitude of the noxious event. For the cognitive processes to lead to protective behavior, their effect should be multiplicative, meaning that all beliefs should be sufficiently salient to lead to adaptive behavior. For example, belief that the threat is serious and individuals are vulnerable to it, as well as the belief that the suggested action is feasible to carry out and will be effective against the imminent threat. This assumption is in line with the principle of expectancy value theory, which means that a zero score on any of the cognitive processes would reduce motivation to zero. The development of the theory of protection motivation followed the tradition of prior psychological theories adopting the expectancy value paradigm to explain attitudinal structures, behavior and persuasive communication. At the same time, the proposed theory enabled Rogers to link small-scale theories into a higher-order model of the relationship between environmental stimuli inducing fear, cognitive processes, and motivation. That helped reach a more comprehensive explanation of the psychological foundation of protection motivation. In addition, the development of the theory was the first attempt to address conflicting findings in the literature about the impact of fear appeals on attitude change and consequent behavior. Those inconsistencies were rooted in the hesitancy of prior studies to conceptualize and differentiate the components of fear appeal. Protection motivation theory, in contrast, brought together the crucial factors of fear appeal, associated with cognitive variables mediating the impact of emotion on behavior and attitude change. A comprehensive yet intuitive framework explaining complex cognitive processes underpinning protective motivation has led to the adoption of the theory beyond the original health context. The cognitive mediating processes postulated by the original protection motivation theory model were shown to be an effective source to stimulate protection motivation. However, further inquiries into the factors contributing to attitude and behavior change following the encounter with the imminent threat led to the revision of the theory. The updated conceptual framework included self-efficacy, the perception of the rewards of counter-protective behavior and the perception of the costs of protective behavior, which made the theory more comprehensive. As a result of the operationalism of the theory, the full nomology of the theory is comprised of seven variables, which schematically could be grouped into emotion, coping appraisal and threat appraisal factors. Response efficacy, self-efficacy and response cost are coping appraisal constructs. They concern the evaluation of the coping resources available to the individual facing a threat. Threat severity, threat vulnerability and maladaptive rewards relate to threat appraisal factors. Fear mediates the paths between threat severity, threat vulnerability and protection motivation. However, a simplified version of protection motivation theory found wide application in the literature across many scientific domains. 
The updated version presented adaptive behavior as the outcome of the positive function of response efficacy, self-efficacy, threat vulnerability and threat severity, and the negative function of response cost. Although protection motivation theory is a rigorous framework to understand individuals' intention to comply with adaptive behavior, it has been noted by the author of the theory and other researchers that it does not provide an exhaustive list of all environmental factors, cognitive processes and moderators that might shape motivation. The limitations of the theory were partly addressed in the revision of the framework, whereby cognitive and individual variables, namely response cost and self-efficacy, were added to the model. The addition of those factors was a significant move toward expanding the exploratory power of the theory as evidenced by its wide testing in diverse disciplines. Later, protection motivation theory was also extended to account for psychological preconditions differentiating individuals' responses to adaptive behavior by adding anticipated regret as a predictor of motivation. Thank you for listening. To download the full review or to read other theory reviews visit open.ncl.ac.uk.